We were talking of the Bayou Bengals with uh, Billy Gomilla. You can join him and the rest of the staff, SB Nation's uh, platform for LSU Athletics uh, and the Valley Shook. Danny Etling says goodbye. Uh, workmanlike quarterback. I don't think we can dismiss his contributions, but they were limited. And uh, fortunately, um, it, it, it's one of the most talked about positions in college football and has been for a long, long time, even when you've won bigger than you have the last five or six years. Everybody's saying, when is LSU going to have a big time quarterback? Danny Etling coming off 16 touchdowns, two picks, very efficient, uh, got the job done depending on your criteria. Now we move on to a situation where it seems to be wide open, but uh, set the stage for us as we uh, head toward uh, March and April and spring camp. Well, the the talent the talent definitely will upgrade overall physically. Danny was a good quarterback as far as he gave you everything he had. He 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 fought hard. He 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 was relatively accurate. He made relatively good decisions. He just wasn't a great playmaker. He was never going to be the guy who was going to you know throw the ball over the field to 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 win a game for you. Uh, but the next two quarterbacks they've got in the pipeline are, are Miles Brennan, who saw a little bit of time this year as a true freshman. And Lowell Narcisse, both of which were four-star prospects uh, with, with some some major offers. Uh, Narcisse is more of a dual-threat runner guy, um, great athlete. Suffered some injuries in high school, to, uh, tore his ACL twice during his high school career. So red shirting was always kind of in the cards for him to make sure he gets right. Big, physical, really big arm, left-handed, which is a bit of a changeup. Whereas Brennan's more of that tall, lanky, drop back kid, does have some quick feet, can move around a little bit, uh, never going to be a, a runner kind of the way Narcisse could be. What's really going to be interesting is how they build the new offense towards those two guys. And it, it's, it's an opportunity to really change a lot of perceptions this year because LSU, for the first time in a couple of years, isn't going to have that bell cow running back, that Leonard Fournette, that Darius Geis, even a Daryl Williams type, that big, burly, uh, you know, 230 pound in between the tackles runner. They're going to have Nick Brissett, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, who are both smaller backs. Brissett's still in that 210, 215 range, but more of a slasher type. And uh, Hilaire, at about 5'8 and about 205 pounds, much more of a scat back type than what we've seen from LSU. So they're going to be in, you know, a lot of talk about moving to it's more of a spread offense. And frankly, that's what the personnel lends itself towards. you got a lot of receivers back, you, you, not a lot of uh, guys that are, are with skins on the wall catching the ball, but a lot of big targets, a lot of highly recruited guys. you got the prospect of two of the two of the 10 best receiver prospects in the country come in coming in and stepping in quickly for playing time. So, you know, if there's ever going to be a time to really kind of sling the ball around the, around the field, that's going to be this spring for LSU. Billy Gomilla joining us. Talk joining to LSU Tigers. Tigers. Of course, there's a shakeup on the coaching staff that uh, segues us nicely from the quarterback um, outlook for 2018 to the offense overall. And Steve Ensminger taking over the offense once again. So what, is old is new again, or however the phrase goes, Billy, in, in looking at uh, his responsibilities. So what uh, changes do you see forthcoming? And uh, I'm curious about the Matt Canada situation because it was so hopeful him coming in from Pitt and what uh, most people envisioned the offense to be taking the talent and what he was able to accomplish at Pitt with lesser talent mm -hmm. and what that should have been. And it just didn't turn out. Well, you know, and, and I don't I don't want to say that Matt Canada didn't do a good job this year. I think he did a good job. He didn't do a great job. You know, we I think we, most of us expected a little bit more than, than 28 points per game, which really was kind of a, a step back from what LSU had accomplished the year previous with, with Steve Ensminger calling plays for the last eight games uh, once Ed Ogeron and, and Ensminger kind of took things over in 2016. Really, it just came down to not to being a poor fit. Um, and that goes on both at Ogeron and on Matt Canada. Just it was a personality clash. Two guys that by the end of the year just really didn't like each other very much, didn't like working together. Um, and this is kind of this is Matt Canada's, I think, sixth job in eight years, his second job in three years, and the second time in which he's been kind of let go from a job with talk that he and the head coach didn't get along. So it's kind of one of those things where this is kind of his track record at this point. Um, 
it's not really a good look for anybody though, because he's when he's your marquee hire as Ed Ogeron and it doesn't go well, people are gonna point the finger at you too. Now, Steve Ensminger's his guy. That's who he wanted. Uh, he did do, I think, a fantastic job with what LSU had on hand in 2016. It was an offense that kind of wasn't really going anywhere, and he got it going somewhere. They had, they scored more than 38 points, I believe, four times. They set a couple of different different uh, school records for yardage uh, in, in conference games, for rushing yardage twice, scored a lot of points. Definitely with that team, threw the ball better I wouldn't – I mean, you, you can't exactly change your offense in the middle of the season. So, he was working within the confines of, of Cam Cameron's playbook. But he, he he did a better job than what Cameron had been doing with the same players. And it was noticeable from the jump as soon as he took over. When it comes to uh, what, what he's going to do moving forward, you know, I've got a lot of confidence in Steve as a play caller. It, it's more, okay, so what's he going to do as far as building an offense, creating a playbook? you know, implementing a philosophy, those kind of things. That's where, you know, I think the proof's going to have to be in the pudding for everybody. Um, one thing that I do think has gotten said a lot is like, well, you know, Ed Ogeron's really pinning his job to Steve Ensminger. He was pinning his job to whoever he hired. If he'd have gone out and gotten, you know, the number one offensive coordinator in the country that had the flashiest offense, again, like Matt Canada, if it didn't work, it wasn't going to matter. Um if you'd have kept Matt Canada, if you'd gotten the same results again, that wouldn't that wasn't going to be good enough for what everybody wanted. Everybody wanted to be an upgrade. This is what Ogeron believes is an upgrade, and we'll see how it pays off for him. They also brought in Jerry Sullivan uh, as kind of a receivers coach, passing game coordinator, jack of all trades, guy who was in the NFL for a long time. Really has a pretty good record as far as receivers coach uh, in the NFL. Worked with Jacksonville with Allen Robinson and. Uh, Alan Hearns and some of those guys. And then uh, in the past with the Cardinals, with Anquan Bolden, uh, the Arizona Cardinals. Really, I mean, he, he's an older hand, but a guy who has a pretty good reputation in terms of knowing offense. So we'll see what they put together. They've talked about, again, implementing more spread, three and four wide receivers. And that fits with what LSU has coming back. It, it's kind of now or never to see that kind of look from LSU, and we'll see how it does. Really what it's just going to come down to is can they – Get the get the passing game going and, and get these these two young quarterbacks ready to contribute. Now, DJ Shark uh, showed out certainly at the Senior Bowl. Probably made himself a little bit of money. Uh, Billy Gomilla joins us uh, to talk LSU football from uh, LSU's platform on SB Nation and the Valley Shook. No Edling, no Shark, no Geis, no Key. All sorts of guys that we're familiar with. Not going to suit up for the Tigers here in 2018. So. Who's back? Well, you've got three really key guys on the offense. You've got uh, Sadiq Charles and Ed, Ed Ingram, who were freshmen, who were kind of pressed in the service, had their ups and downs, but closed the year out pretty well. You got Garrett Brumfield back as the veteran at one of the guard spots. You did lose all conference center, Will Clapp, uh, but you are replacing him with a third year guy in Lloyd Cushenberry. And then you're going to plug in, hopefully, Bedar Traore, the, the number one Juco offensive tackle, at one of those tackle spots. You get tight end, uh, tight end Foster Morrow back. You got a lot of receivers that have played. They've just never really shown you that they can be playmakers consistently. You've got Steven Sullivan and Drake Davis, a pair of big targets, 6'3", 6'5", 220, 240 pounds. Uh, you got Derek Dillon, more of a, slip, a, a shifty uh, slot type of receiver. Uh, 5'11", 190, but more of a speed guy. And then you've got Terrace Marshall walk, you know, coming in as a true freshman at 6'3", 190, going to be expected to compete for time quickly. Um, they've got to get those guys going. There's just no two ways about that. At running back, you've got guys that were both very highly recruited, but are just very unproven. They just haven't had to do a whole lot the last couple of years, mainly because of what LSU's had at the top of their running back rotation. But now it's their time. And, you know, I do think it does help that that Nick Brissett will be a senior. Uh, there's just something to be said for for having that that experience, knowing the speed of the game and being able to step in and just being older than a lot of the guys that are going to be trying to tackle you. I think that we saw that that really pay off for Daryl Williams last year, who had been very much kind of a midland backup and then came through and had a really nice senior year for LSU, both as a runner and a receiver. 